America, hi. How are you? Happy Monday. I just got an email from my mother. Mm hmm. An email from mom. Uh, and I printed it out and I, and I have to read it to you because <laughs> it kills me. It starts, Michael, it's your mother. You seem very busy here of late writing stories and sharing them with your little friends on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe that's why I've heard nothing from you after leaving several messages over the weekend. If you'd prefer we communicate publicly, I'm happy to do so through a series of short stories, perhaps, posted on our respective Facebook pages. That would be fun. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to post a video, but if I did, I'd read you this account of my adventure over the weekend. It needs a title, and I'm stuck between Old Blue and Walmart People. I'll let you decide. It's not passive aggressive at all, right? Uh, and then she and then she tells me this story in the form of a letter to me, and I'm going to read it to you, dear Mike. You know that I'm a responsible person, right? Not once did I forget to pick you up or your brothers after ball practice or Boy Scouts. Not once did I leave your elderly grandparents stranded at the mall or forget to give them their medication. Not once have I ever run out of the house and left the stove on or forgotten to turn off the iron or locked my keys in the car. And yet somehow I managed to leave my big blue purse dangling from the handle of a shopping cart in the Walmart parking lot on Saturday. And frankly, I'm not sure I'll ever be the same. <laughs> I realized it was gone when I pulled into our parking spot at the condo yesterday and reached over into the passenger seat. Nothing. There are only so many places a big blue purse can hide in a Scion XB, and I checked them all. I also lifted the floor mats and opened the tiny glove compartment. Had there been an ashtray, I probably would have looked there too. I don't think I've felt this degree of anguish since that day in Kansas City, listening to you speak to a few hundred cancer survivors. Suddenly, out of the blue, you said to the crowd, and now my mother, Peggy Rowe, would like to say a few words. I had considered passing out to teach you a lesson, but by the time I reached the podium, I had resumed breathing, and the nausea had passed, mostly. Anyway, I was sick with panic. But thankfully, your father had just returned from his Meals on Wheels obligations and was there with his soothing brand of logic and unflappable calm. John, I said, I lost my big blue purse at Walmart. What? You tossed your figs in a hearse that won't start? I handed him his hearing aids and repeated. Oh, no, he said. This is terrible. Where did you last have it? When did you last see it? What exactly was in it? A dozen questions later, Perry Mason whipped out his flip phone and began canceling credit cards as I wept on a landline with a Walmart customer service representative. There were no purses in Lost and Found, but security promised to look around and call me back. Ten minutes later, they did. No purses to be found, big, blue, or otherwise. Meanwhile, your father had begun a written inventory of missing items, a $400 smartphone, my new prescription glasses, my favorite Timex watch, now with a brand new Walmart battery, <laughs> driver's license, medical cards, gift cards, cash, when suddenly he threw down his pen and jumped up. Come on, Peg, we're going back to that parking lot. Maybe somebody just took the cash and threw everything else away. Crooks do that, you know. Do they, John? Do crooks linger in the Walmart parking lot inspecting the contents of stolen purses, deciding what to keep and what to discard at a civilized and leisurely pace? Your father, immune to sarcasm, was already out the door and halfway down the stairs, hell-bent on retrieving what was rightfully ours. You can't go out dressed like that, I called after him, but of course he could, and he did. And 15 minutes later, after a white-knuckle ride through five miles of rush-hour traffic, we were parked in the same spot I had vacated an hour earlier. Dad jumped from the car and ran to the corral, where he conducted a quick but fruitless inspection of every cart. Then he proceeded to a nearby trash can, removed the lid, and peered inside. Dressed in his dirty jobs t-shirt and a pair of Bermuda shorts from 1979, he appeared ready to scrounge for his next meal. But food was the last thing on your father's mind as he cranked his hearing aids to the stethoscope setting, pulled out his flip phone, pressed a few buttons, and plunged his head into the garbage can. 
Call me snooty, Mike, but it's hard to stand by while your husband dumpster dives at the local Walmart. <laughs> I'm going back inside to check with security, I yelled, above the din of passing cars. Don't be surprised if people stop and offer you change. But he didn't hear me. As I crossed the vast blacktop toward the sprawling supercenter, I passed a number of Walmart shoppers heading for their cars. Which of these fine citizens, I wondered, might have stumbled across my big blue purse and returned to lost and found? The pale girl dressed in black with the metal dog collar around her neck? The shirtless gentleman with a leather vest and a mohawk? Maybe the young couple with matching nose rings and tattoos on their foreheads. <laughs> My shoulders were slumped as I reached the store. Before entering, I glanced back to monitor your father's progress. He had made it halfway across the parking lot, one can at a time, tap, tap, tapping his little flip phone and cocking his head to the side like an Irish setter, <laughs> listening for signs of life in the garbage. No luck, obviously, but on the positive side, I could see he was, in fact, far from underdressed. Inside, I located the lost and found, which consisted of an assortment of mismatched mittens, scarves, baby bottles, and pacifiers, but no purses. Excuse me, I said, is there a manager I can speak with? Try register 20, the harried worker said with a shrug. Sometimes the manager hangs out there. There was no manager at register 20, but as I spoke with the cashier, I heard in the near distance a familiar sound, the classic ring of an ancient telephone, unrecognizable to anyone born in this century, my custom ringtone. Heart racing, I followed the sound to a shelf off to the side of the register, and there, surrounded by a mishmash of odds and ends, was my big blue purse peering out at me like E.T. from a cluttered closet shelf. I pounced on it. I kissed it. I took out my phone, which was still ringing. John, I said, projecting my voice as I usually do when speaking to your father. Guess what? <laughs> Jeez, stop shouting, he said. I know, you've found it. Come out front, I want you to meet somebody. I left the store, clutching my purse to my heart. By that time, I had affectionately named it Old Blue. <laughs> a woman, sitting behind the wheel of a car, was laughing with Dad, or possibly at him. Hey, Peg, this lady found your purse and took it to security. I thought you might want to thank her. Her name was Beverly and she had been intrigued by the sight of an elderly man in the parking lot, running from trash can to trash can, dialing his cell phone, then sticking his head inside the receptacle. Instead of calling 911 to report a silver alert or taking his picture to submit to real people of Walmart, Beverly had called out to him from her car. Are you looking for something, sir? Yes, I'm looking for a big blue purse. Ah. I turned it in an hour ago. I found it hanging from the handle of a shopping cart right over there. I wanted to kiss the woman, but some people are funny about being kissed by strangers. So I told her how foolish I felt and how careless I had been. Oh, that's nothing, said Beverly. One day I came home from shopping, opened my trunk, and it was empty. I left all my groceries in the cart at the store. <laughs> we all had a good laugh, and when your father offered her a gift... She said, no, no, I won't take a thing. Just seeing the look on your faces is reward enough. Anyway, Mike, I'm not sure there's a moral to this story beyond the fact that you never know who you're going to meet down at the Walmart. <laughs> your father might have a different interpretation, but I'll let you ask him about that this evening when you call us after dinner. In the meantime, if you share this story with your little friends on Facebook, don't mention Beverly's last name. I'd hate to embarrass her. In fact, don't mention mine either. <laughs> or our phone number, which I've attached for your convenience. <laughs> Talk soon, Mom. <laughs> P.S. What kind of person forgets to put their groceries in the trunk? I mean, really? <laughs> oh, crap. 
I'm sorry, that kills me. Um, I'd love to chat, but <laughs> I have to make a phone call.